Good morning, Monday morning. Hope you're all well. I'm just checking my watch. I managed to get up here a little bit earlier this morning. I'll set my phone on there for a wee second. Oh, isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? Good morning, Monday morning. Good morning, Mr. MacArthur. Look at the colours up there. My big tree. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning. Right, let's get this rattled. Good morning, Monday morning, here we are. Trust everyone is well. And thank you for being part of my vlog, months of vlogging. Um, I did actually count them and I've forgotten, but I definitely now have more vlogs than I have subscribers. I have completed I think 102 vlogs. I think this morning will be 103. And yeah, I've got like 92 subscribers. So I think that's a great achievement. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, everybody. So this morning, and just getting totally tongue tied there, invented identity. An identity that we have invented. You know, thinking back to uh, thinking back to our um, West Highland Way voyage, which um, didn't give us much time to think, because we were only away for three days. But you know, everything gets simplified. We had everything that we needed in our backpacks. We had each other. We certainly didn't have the weather, um, but that was all we had. However, even within that. The identity, the meaning that we were placing on others, on what brands and what labels and what quality of backpacks they had or the quality of the boots they had. And, you know, I remember looking at the guy that was going, that was powering ahead of me. And I was looking at his boots thinking, I need to get me a pair of their boots. Because quite clearly it's the boots that keep them up front. Nothing to do with the fact that he's a whole lot fitter than I am. Right, I even found myself last night looking at walking poles, and um, not that there's anything wrong with the walking poles I've got, and I've got decent walking poles. But I started thinking about other walking poles that might make me better at what it is that I'm doing. But in actual fact, there's very few external things that I could use that's going to make me better, other than putting in the hard work and pushing myself a little bit further beyond my comfort zone in order to start to uh, work a little bit harder and be a little bit more resilient. So, um, invented identity. Now, if we go back 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years, things were a lot more simpler in a lot of ways. Even going to college or university wasn't an option. And when college and university became an option, the things that you could study were microscopic in comparison. Now, I don't actually know what they were or would have been. I'm just imagining that there would have been a handful of subjects that you could have went to college or university to have studied back 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, right? Whereas now you can study anything from the sun rising to the sun setting to medicine, to microscopic medicine, to macroscopic medicine, to, you know, you can study addiction, you can study different types of addiction, you can study... The choice is absolutely massive. Now, back in the day, you had kind of one option, leather sandals, kind of cloth gown, maybe a leather belt or a rope belt. If you had a rope belt, you might have been working class. If you had a leather belt, you might have been upper class, right? And it was these simple things that defined us in our social status and our hierarchy. Now the world has become completely and utterly distracted by labels and we can pretty much invent whatever identity we choose to, to, to invent. Now, 
from what kind of alcohol we consume, if we consume alcohol, what kind of uh, restaurants we eat in, um, says, oh, I'm vegan, oh, I'm vegan, oh, I'm in recovery, um, oh, I'm an electrician, oh, I'm a counsellor, um, I'm a mechanic, I'm a lorry mechanic, I'm a motorbike mechanic, whatever those things might be, we have became identified with an external reality, and I'm just wondering if all that we've got are actually um, assisting our development, distracting our development, or if there's a paradox of paralysis through the amount of choice that we've got. Okay, so we can just about holiday in any location. The hotels are set up for different uh, financial uh, different packages. You know, we've got holiday packages, we've got family packages, we've got VIP packages. Now... Invented identity. I'm wondering about myself, right? And just throwing this question out there for those of you that are interested. How much of your natural resources, of your energy, are you putting into your, inv your invented identity, right? Because what you're, what I, or what I am attempting to do, keep it with me, is I'm wanting the world to perceive me in a particular way. And to be fair, that's probably not how I feel. So, like, ATM. At the moment, I've got my backpack on. That's me. I kind of gave myself a little kick up the backside this morning. I also allowed myself to have the weekend off, which I did. I slept till 7, both on Saturday and Sunday. And um, back up at 5 o'clock this morning. And back out and get And um, I'm back training again. Uh, I'm away doing the Great Glen Way. Uh, 29th, 30, 31st of July so I need to kind of keep active and uh, get myself back on the trails again, right but, so somebody looking at this here's Ross Hislop he's got a backpack on he's sweating people might think, oh, he's active he's an outdoors type of guy right there's nothing further for the truth you know um, I like the idea of camping love the idea of camping, would like everybody to think that I love camping. I detest camping. I hate it. I like a bed. I like a warm shower. But I want that image. I like that image of that great outdoors type person, right? And yes, I do it. Yes, I try it. But it's so far removed. It's a complete other end of the spectrum from who or what I actually am. Now, in the same token, I've worked with people, I've worked in prisons, um, I've worked with re-offenders, I've worked with guys that are um, what you would classify as hard men. See, when you get to know them, good morning, Mr. Mitchell, I hope you're well, Mr. Bob. No seen you for a while, mate, we need to catch up. Morning, Nadia. I see you all the time, Nadia. So, hi, Bob. So, hard guys. Um, when you get to know these, you know, exterior hard men they're actually very very soft and very very vulnerable and have a very creative mind it's just that the flow the river of their destruction and demise has been channeled or flowed down um, a disruptive route rather than a more creative route so invented identities how much are we placing our meaning on external things, the car we drive. And I've noticed that, that's one I've noticed, right? So, um, while I was getting myself back in my feet after um, after a breakup, I bought myself a little mini. Why? Because it was economic. Um, it was still a kind of four wheel drive mini. It still had that sort of off-roady sort of feel to it, right? Um, and I've changed my car and I've bought myself a Land Rover and, you know, that's quite outdoors and it's, it's quite macho and it's quite big. And I'm noticing how people perceive me differently based on my little hairdresser's car, because that's what they used to call me. Oh, here comes Ross and his wee hairdresser's motor, right? Um, which served me very, very well for three years. Now, how much time are we placing on our invented identity, Right? And this brings me back to the thoughts of 
the investment that we put in our identity has got us trapped and it's still got us metaphorically as Adam and Eve were in the garden after they ate the fruit from the forbidden tree because what they did then which caused the fall in inverted commas and that metaphor meaning was that we hid right we started to hide and I can only talk for myself and I can talk for a couple of close pals where we have intimate philosophical discussions about ourselves but we are hiding behind a false manufactured identity which we can invent and the level of choice that we now have is far more reaching than what we would have had 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. We have now all kinds of brands and labels down to the, the candy, the sweets we eat, the drinks we drink. Are you an iron brew drinker? Are you a Coca-Cola drinker? Are you a water drinker? Are you a sparkling water drinker? I'm a sparkling water drinker, right? Um, down to the foods where we shop. Do you shop in Waitrose? Do you shop in Marks and Spencers? Do you shop in Tesco's, right? All of these external things are all layers that we've put onto our identity. Do we drive our Range Rover and park it on the curb before we run into Waitrose quickly in order to just get some stuff for Hubby's Dindins? Right? Now, who we actually are, are all exactly the same. We're all absolutely identical at source. Right? At source, we are all exactly the same, yet we've invented an identity to hide behind and there's many layers and this is where it came to because yesterday um, yesterday we went out with a wee kind of family excursion yesterday and the roads and the traffic and the busyness and the shops are coming back open and there was some real serenity in lockdown there was a massive amount of serenity in lockdown um, and to be fair Yesterday was the first day that I put on my bright white new trainers, right? My wee jeans and I actually put on a little identity yesterday when I was going to the shops. I actually managed to wear something other than just my kind of walking trousers and a t-shirt that I've been doing for the last three months. Um, or a shirt from the top down because I had my, had my tracksuit bottoms on when I was on a Zoom call at work. Now... The amount of effort that we are putting into these identities is keeping us away from who we actually are at source. But so many of us were traumatised at a level of source, right, that we've dissociated from who we are. And the only way that we can feel any fulfilment or validation in who we think we are or who we're supposed to... I'm doing that a lot the now. I really am. I need to stop it. I wish somebody would just cut my fingers off, right? I've got a big judgment on people that go superior, right? Um, and here I find myself doing it. Now, the invented identity, which is keeping us hiding, it's keeping us hiding from, and here I'm going to say the word where everybody's going to shut off, just watch the numbers dwell. Where we're hiding from God, whatever God might mean, and I think it's no, I keep saying it, I think it's, I think it's no coincidence that dog is spelt God backwards. Right, um, I've only had this little guy in my life for two and a half years and every day, there's not a day goes by that I don't get a lesson from him and how to live and how to be. Um, constant, unconditional love. Loves me no matter what. Wants to give me, wants to, every time I come home, he goes and picks up his wee fluffy dragon and runs to the door to meet me to show me he's got a wee toy and he's wagging his tail, right? And that is just love. It's just complete unconditional love not tainted not flawed just completely innocent and totally free now what if we were like that goodness there's a tree come down oh, the trees fell down on the path and it's not fell down it's been cut down somebody's been up there and actually cut that down on purpose I wonder why I wonder what value cutting that tree would down would give someone anyway it's not very good firewood. Um, yeah, that's going to be a bit difficult if people were going past there on the mountain bike. Um, anyway, what was I talking about there? Invented identities. Now, what is it about being clean and serene? What is it about 
who we were before we hid and why are we hiding. Morning Mags, how much energy, morning Harvey, how much energy are we putting into this manufactured personality, um, you know, who we think we are or who we want the world to see who we are, right? And how much authority we put on people who might have wealth or money or how much, look at how much, like, uh, for an example, if you're a manager or um, a CEO or whatever that might be, right? And, you know, you go and visit one of the, 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 one of the operations, right? Have you noticed that as you're walking through there as the CEO or the manager, you can almost hear everybody whispering, he's the owner, that's the owner, that's the owner, that's the owner, that's the CEO, right? And you know for a fact that as you're walking into it, because your own desk's an absolute mess, right? That you walk in and you can tell that they knew you were coming and the whole place got a, a deep clean before you arrived, right? You look at everybody's desks and all the pictures are strategically placed on the desk and there's no cups of coffee everywhere and the pens are sitting lined up like good pen, blue pen, black pen, pencil, right? And you look at everybody's desk and you're like, ah, this isn't authentic, this isn't real, right? I want to see people as they are, not as how they want to be portrayed, as if we are good conscientious. Nobody can be that clean. Nobody can keep an office that clean. Nobody can keep an environment that clean. Nobody's space can be that clean, right? And the laws of the averages are, if you've got 50 employees or 150 employees, 95% of those people can't all have OCD because that's what your desks look like. They obviously heard that the CEO was coming up. Oh, the boss is coming in today. We better tidy up, empty the bins, get the place tidied, spick and span, right? Kitchen's absolutely immaculate. Milk's even in date, right? So... Back to what is it about our invented identity that we need to hold on to that so strongly, right? Because we're so vulnerable about being seen as who we actually are. And what I mean by that is metaphorically naked. We've all began to accessorize very well and hang like baubles on a Christmas tree, different fabrics and layers of colour and different designer labels in order to make us feel as if we're important. But we forgot just how important that we actually are. We've forgotten, and this is a long and unwinded way. My buddy was up yesterday, we were doing a bit of, a bit of wild swimming and stuff. And it's like, when you strip everything back to just two guys walking miles along an old military road, right? What do you really need? What do we really need? Now, what if, and I think about things like this quite a bit, probably more than I need to, but what if our supermarkets, what if truck drivers went on strike? And there was no fuel and no food. Look how quickly Tesco's, Marks and Spencer's, Waitrose would empty, right? And see all the Waitrose folk. See if they walked in and it was empty, I can guarantee you. They'd light that, they'd light that Range Rover Sport up and they'd be at Aldi's and Lidl's before you could clap your horns, right? Because it doesn't matter who you are, when you're hungry, you turn back very quickly into the animal that you actually are. But the paradox of that is, we're not only an animal, we're actually a very giving, sharing, community-based bunch of people. And when our chips are down, right, people want to help and they allow themselves to be helped. But when we're living life through an invented identity, it's very diff difficult to receive help and very get difficult to give help from a heart-based perspective because we're giving it at some level in order to get that's just another layer of our identity. Oh, I give 10% of my wages to the church or I give 10% to this or I give to that because somewhere it cures my guilt and makes me feel a little bit better. Because there's very few of us are living in authenticity. So, an, 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 an invented identity and hiding and how much energy are we putting into this in, invented identity and what would it actually cost us for us just to start to show up naked. Now, I mean that metaphorically, I'm not expecting you all to look, join some kind of nudist camp, 
psychology in Udice camp, right, counselling in Udice camp. You know, Gordon and I were chatting yesterday, and it's like, well, your identity's a backpack. Like, when you're doing your vlogs in the morning, you've got your backpack on. Okay, that's not meant, it's not staged. It's because um, I don't have time between 9 to 5 to do a vlog. I've got time at 6 in the morning when I leave the house. I've got to carry my backpack because I'm carrying my backpack when I go training. So I'm just accumulating everything. He went, yeah, but you're not sitting with your top off doing yoga in the back garden like some of these coaches are. Or you're not sitting there with your, you know, your, um, your Stone Island hat on or your... Valencia t-shirt or your Lacoste t-shirt and you know swinging your uh, Audi Mercedes or BMW car keys about the place and telling people how busy you are with clients he says Gross I've never heard you talk about how busy you are with clients um, in fact I very seldomly hear you talking about clients he says whereas I watch other people that are doing this rodeo that you're on and he says they're projecting a very different message which then means they're attracting a very different subculture of people, right? So that's fascinating in itself. So my encouragement today and my thoughts for the day are your invented identity, the paradox of choice. The more choices that we think we have, the more disabled we are in making them. It's like at work, you know, you get offered to pay into and the company will pay X amount towards it. They didn't just come along and offer me one product, right? Has anybody been to America, any Scottish folk listening, right? Been to the USA and you walk into a restaurant and they're like that. What do you want for your lunch? Baked potato, please. What would you like in that baked potato? How would you like that baked potato done? How would you like the baked potato done? How would you like the skin? Would you like skins on that? Would you like the skin off that? Just a baked potato, please, right? And then they start to tell you, well, what kind of, would you like salad with that? Yeah, what kind of dressing would you like with that? And you got offered like a dozen dressings, right? And then you ask for coleslaw. Just stick some coleslaw at the side of it, will you? Realistically, any Heinz beans and some cheese and just stick some beans and some cheese in it for me, right? And they offer you 10 different types of coleslaw. I don't know if you guys are like me, but see if you've ever been in the USA on holiday and those are the kind of options that you get. You end up just freezing. You just sit there completely paralysed. Eh, I just want a baked potato. Can I have some butter? Just some butter and some salt. Right, just keep it simple. Right? So we've invented this world where we have got a massive amount of choice, which makes us think that we've got a massive amount of free will, makes us think we've got, we can do anything, we can go anywhere, we can do anything, be anything, be anybody, right? But in actual fact, what that's causing at some level is it's causing paralysis, it's causing us to be stuck, it's causing us not to move forward. What if we went back to the garden? What if we went back to simplistic terms where things were all just really equal? Not in a communist kind of way, just a lot more simple, a lot less choice. Because if you get to the point where you've got the, the German sports car, a lot of people feel guilty about having it. A lot of people don't want to project the image that they've actually manufactured for themselves because at some level they just want to be normal and fit in with the street kids because they were never really liked from them in the first place. So what they've then went out and done is they've then went out and created a reality and manufactured a reality to fit in with this other subsection culture of people. Then when they arrive at that other subculture of people, they realise they don't really fit in there either. And then you've just created huge payments, but still feel really empty inside, right? So the manufactured, the invented identity, down to what brand of shoes you wear, even what brand of socks you wear, what underwear you wear that nobody really sees. Certainly nobody sees mine. Um, what jeans you wear, what shoes you wear, what car you drive, what watch you wear, what backpack you've got, what hiking shoes you've got, what hiking poles you've got, right? We are looking to be seen through the eyes of others, through an illusionary sense of self that we've created and that we're projecting out into the world. Now, what is the truth? Who am I actually, right? Underneath all of these trappings, all of these qualifications, or whatever it is that people are saying, the meaning that we put on our labels, and how much energy is that costing us? And what would it take for us just to fall back to being innocent and who am I actually? and allowing ourselves to step into our own authority and not have the authority through the Range Rover or the Rolex watch, not have to rely on an external authority of 
the company that we own or who we are or what position we are in that company, right? Now, what would it be like to have all that energy back, all that vitality back that we're placing on external people, places and things? Now, I always find Monday very clunky and um, I hadn't really given it a thought. I was actually not going to do them, but... Um, I'm going to keep on rolling with them at least Monday to Fridays and then I might look at what people would like to be discussed um, and start to take sort of uh, so that I'm not just blabbering on the insides of my head like somebody gives me a private message and wants something discussed uh, grief or alcoholism or drug addiction or whatever just give me a private message and I'll look at doing them moving forward um, this will be the 103rd blog vlog and I have now got less subscribers than I have vlogs. So that's me doing my pushing bit. If you're getting anything from this and you feel that any of your friends or family would get anything from it, they're there. They're, um, it's, it's a kind of diary from lockdown for me. And um, it's something that I might look back on in years to come and see where I actually was at the time of doing them. So it's Ross Hislop, Heart of the Matter, on YouTube. Um, if you feel that anybody that you know friends or family would benefit from the rambling rabbles of Ross, then please pass it on and let's see if we can get the subscribers up to even more than the vlogs. Wouldn't that be an achievement in itself then? So change change the structure a bit. Have a fantastic Monday. Really have an absolutely fantastic Monday and um, all the blessings from my wee hike in the woods in South Lanarkshire. I'll give you a wee look around about me where I am. It's gorgeous. Aren't I blessed? You know what, I used to feel guilty about saying that, that I'm really lucky where I live and I'm really lucky to have this and I'm really lucky. You know, wherever you are, there's woods and paths, you can go and walk anywhere. I saw Mags was out walking yesterday, I loved seeing where she was, it was a whole lot warmer looking than it was where I was. There we go, look at that. And then the river Clyde's down in there somewhere, you might hear it. Have a great Monday everybody, wishing you well, stay safe.